Hello everyone and welcome to another installment of my video blog well, number two anyway so it's been a while now and any chance I had of getting back and doing all my reviews gone it's a shame but it actually gives me a lot more time for reading which is another reason why I'm not going to do all my reviews now today I'm going to concentrate on a few books by one author now as some of you may have um, heard I got a Kindle recently here it is and the reason I got a Kindle was to get uh, free classics and I'm not really talking about you know the popular classics I'm thinking of things which are very difficult to obtain um, some um, foreign language classics, German, French um, but the ones that I'm going to talk about today are by Margaret Oliphant and the Chronicles of Carlingford series now whenever I've looked, um, especially the early ones, they're very difficult to find and I was very fortunate then to be able to find them electronically and read the first few. So the first ones that I'm going to talk about today were um, Salem Chapel and The Rector and The Doctor's Family. Now they're very interesting these books because if you're a big Trollope fan like me, Anthony Trollope, just thought that clear, um, then they're wonderful to read because of the contrast, the contrast between the Church of England religious views and then the dissenting Methodist views, because Salem Chapel especially is all about um, Arthur Vincent, um, uh, Methodist minister, and the problems that he has with his family and with his flock, as they're called. Um, so basically he's the new um, minister in town, and he has a lot of problems because whereas the Church of England minister is kind of on a pedestal and can basically do what he wants, unless he does something really bad, the Methodist ministers are supposed to tend to their flock and are actually paid by them so the people have a bit of a, um, a say in what he does and he feels very constrained by this, he's a very high intellectual person so this um, tension between the people expecting him to act the way they want and his duties to them as their religious leader very very interesting. Um, the second one, the rector, is um, a very a short story it's probably only about 20-30 pages about um, a man who comes to um, take up the place in one of the Church of England churches in Carlingford and basically discovers over the few weeks that his academic studies have not prepared him for real life and being a real minister. Um, very short but it's, it, very interesting. And the third one is The Doctor's Family and this is where the Doctor, Dr Edward Ryder, who we met in the first book, um, talks, well we find out about him and his lazy brother and then all of a sudden he gets some visitors from Australia, which is great. I haven't seen many Australians in um, Victorian literature. And um, yeah, a very unexpected visitor, and then we find out what happens there. So there's good, there's bad, and there's ugly. And I think I'll go through them in that order. Um, it's, it's very good, uh, especially Salem Chapel, in the way that it contrasts, as I said, the Trollope's comfortable landed gentry Church of England religion with um, the Methodist lower 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 middle class the shopkeeper class um, that um, band together and pay to build up their own ministries and hire their own um, preachers because they're not satisfied with the Church of England they think it's a you know an exclusive club which locks them out um, so that contrast is amazing um, it's, it's very very interesting you know coming from the 20th, now 21st century, looking back, you know, 1500, uh, 1500, 1500 years, 150 years, to see, um, you know, what was happening then. Um, the, also with the, um, give me a minute, <laughs> with the Doctor's family, um, I think the Australian part was the most interesting, so a lot of Victorian literature only deals with um, people going to become Australians. You know? Um, for example, in David Copperfield, I think the family go off to Australia to make a new life. You don't often hear of them coming back, and, you, and when they do come back, you don't often get them, you know, being a, a major part of, of the novel. So when Nettie Underwood and her sister come back, and also their friend, and it's very interesting to see, the, you know, the difference in character, and it's, they're not just caricatured, but the emphasis is on how. Um, straightforward they are and how unaffected by manners and what other people will think. So I thought that was, that was again very interesting. The Bad, um, Salem Chapel is quite a long book and it gets a bit dull in places to be honest. Um, 
there's a lot. I, I think um, with these books, Oliphant's kind of concentrating on one strand, and that's then made it a bit tedious at times. Whereas you get Dickens or Troll, there's sometimes there are multiple things going on, George Eliot as well, and they're woven together. And I think that makes it for a much better book than just following the one strand the whole way through. Um, I think also one of the things I like about Trollope's books is the use that he makes of the background of his imaginary um, county of Barsets and Barchester and Silverbridge and everything and I think that so far Oliphant hasn't really done that they're just kind of cardboard backgrounds at the moment and I'm hoping in the next few books that she'll develop that a bit more because I, I do like that having that you know usual background people that you know um, and used skillfully throughout a series um, we have heard a few times of um, Arthur Wentworth, who's the vicar at um, one of the Anglican churches, and Lucy Woodhouse, and the next novel is called The Perpetual Curate, and that will focus on him, so he's already been introduced. And again, comparing to Trollope, it um, would be very interesting because um, in The Last Chronicle of Barset, um, Josiah Crawley is also a perpetual curate, which is um, basically they get set a salary and they've got no chance of bettering their, their um, circumstances and that's going to be one of the plot points I think for the perpetual curate because he wants to marry and can't because he can't afford it. I think we all know that. We've all been there. Um, the Ugly. Um, now if you can get good e-texts it's great but you can't always. Now for the rector and the doctor's family I got good ones from manybooks.net um, but for Salem Chapel, the only e free e-copy I could find was one, I think, from University of Iowa or something like that. Um, I think that um, you know someone's just obviously taken an old book and scanned it, and that's all they've done. And it's riddled with typos, and it was pretty trying to read, even when I did actually manage to get them right in the right order, because there were actually two parts to the um, to Salem Chapel. And I started reading the second part first and thought, oh, well, this is a very weird way to start a book. And after the first chapter, I realised and went back and found the, the first part of the book. But yeah, a lot of typos, question marks, pound signs, hashes, um, you know, spellings. You think, what? Ah, oh, okay. And you realise what they're actually trying to say. But yeah, so be careful. That's one of the drawbacks of searching and trawling the net for old e-copies. I think I'll do for now. <laughs> so, look, um, I think it's very interesting, especially as I, I've mentioned about a hundred times. If you do like um, Anthony Trollope's novels, especially the Bar Barchester Chronicles, then um, Oliphant is, you know, this series is a great contrast and well worth reading in, in tandem. And that's why I bought a Kindle, basically, is to be able to get books like that, to be able to search out things and, and not have to pay, you know, fifty dollars or whatever just to find a, sh uh, a short book which unfortunately is out of print or you know only um, printed by you know, very select um, publishers. Alright, so I'm going to leave you there and um, hopefully I'll get back to you all soon. Bye for now.